movement growing to take down Confederate monuments in the wake of the Charlottesville attack. Well, this morning, the mayor of Charlottesville is expected to make a major announcement about the Robert E. Lee statue in Emancipation Park, which was the focal point of last week's protest, and he'll also speak about the legacy of Heather Heyer, the 32-year-old who was killed last Saturday. Thousands coming out in Charlottesville, marching with candles to remember Heather and the many, many who were injured. I had a chance to speak with Heather's mother, Susan Bro, just moments ago. Susan, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and we continue to send you and your family our condolences, and I, I hope that you do feel all the love and support from around the world and that it brings you some measure of comfort. How are you and the family holding up right now, Susan? Well, the dog's not doing well, honestly, and um, when I left this morning, I told her if her mother came to take her, that she could go. Because um, I think she's just grieving herself to death, honestly. And um, I mostly don't have time to grieve. I have a mission to accomplish. And um, But yes, when I get home, my husband and I both get on the computer and we're just pouring through reams and reams and reams of, of well-wishers and people who knew Heather, people who didn't know Heather, it, it's helping. And I appreciate so much your outpourings of, of true heartfelt love. Um, it's, it's holding me up, it's holding me together right now. I'm so glad to hear that. And as more people continue to learn more about your daughter, she is just touching so many people. And I have to say, the memorial service was absolutely beautiful. And your words, Susan, are powerful, especially when you said they tried to kill my child to shut her up. Well, guess what? You just magnified her. Absolutely. She is now around the world. I, I just can't even begin to tell you how her mission has been carried on. I, I, I need, I almost need a secretary to write down all these things for me because it's just blowing my mind how she's reached so far. I know that politicians also reached out to you that they wanted to be a part of her service and you respectfully declined. Why was that? It was a private moment that I was willing to allow the world to view. But this, this was my only chance to have my private time with my daughter. I'm more than willing to have other events where they can speak on her causes. Right now I'm a little wounded, um, I'm a little angry, and so I'm not trusting any politicians at the moment. I feel like people are trying to use me and use Heather's name to further their causes that are not necessarily in alignment with hers. So I'm a little leery of politicians at the moment, but the funeral was not because of that. The funeral was just simply, this was a family moment. And the anger is in part because you feel that the politicians are trying to, to reach out to you for their own particular agendas and not to further your daughter's mission? I'm fearful of that and I don't have enough experience to sort through that. Um, I, I'm just leery, I'm just leery. I've always been a bit of a cynic and a bit of a skeptic and this is kind of added to that. Well, this is new territory for you and, and for this to, to so tragically happen and, and bring your daughter and your family into the spotlight and people reaching out, including we understand that President Trump has reached out. Have you talked to him directly yet? Um, I have not and now I will not. Um, at first, I just missed his calls. Uh, the, call act the first call, it looked like, actually came during the funeral. Um, I didn't even see that message. There were three more frantic messages from press secretaries throughout the day, and I didn't know why. That would have been on Wednesday. And I was home recovering from the exhaustion of the funeral. And um, so I thought, well, I'll get to him later. And then I had more meetings uh, to establish her foundation. So I hadn't really watched the news until last night. And I'm, I'm not talking to the president now. I'm sorry. 
what after did you what he said about my child. And it's not that I saw somebody else's tweets about him. I saw an actual clip of him at a press conference equating the protesters like Ms. Heyer uh, with the KKK and the white supremacists. And that is where you are right now because after his statement, after he read his statement on Monday, you thanked him, but now you've had a chance to hear his remarks from Tuesday and that has changed your position as far as the president is concerned and wanting to, to hear from him. Absolutely. You can't wash this one away by shaking my hand and saying I'm sorry. Is there something though that I'm you... I'm not forgiving for that. Is there something, though, that you would want to say to the president? Think before you speak. Well, you, as I said, that's something that a lot of mamas say to their, to their children. Is there anything other than the president's press conference on Tuesday? Is there anything else that has been said by him or anyone else that has, has angered you, upset you? There's so many things coming at me so fast from so many angles. Um, I did read, uh, and I knew that these comments probably existed, that Heather was part of a terrorist group, um, that she was part of a terrorist group, Black Lives Matter, and, and I can't even remember what the other group was. And I just said absolutely false. Heather was not part of any group other than the girls in her office. She was part of a group of human beings who cared to protest. And I, and I want to end in talking with you. I want to end talking about your daughter. Um, we've, we've heard comments from her colleagues and friends and how she wanted justice for all. How will you, what yes. do you think of most when you reflect upon your daughter? Um, that tenacious, stubborn spirit that just would not let you get by with a half-assed answer. You had, to get, you had to get to the truth. You had to get to the bottom. You had to get to the nitty-gritty of it. She was not going to let go. Uh, as she said, if you, if you pay attention and, and do something about it, and she, she certainly yes. did that. Uh, Susan Bro, bless you for raising such a loving, caring child and we wish you and your family thank you all the all the very best and certainly appreciate your time especially with all that's going on right now please take care thank you so I much guess. as she said you know she didn't have a chance as you would imagine to watch all that has taken place since her uh, daughter's funeral and when she saw the press conference that the president gave you could see well she spoke for herself how she felt about that and um, Susan Bro, she's actually received death threats. People have actually, um, but she feels compelled to um, continue her daughter's mission. And her daughter's mission was about equality for all and social justice for all. And she said, as she said at the service, it's hard to lose a child, but to lose a child in vain? Yeah. She said, no, it has to mean something. She's a mom on a mission now. Yeah. yeah. And you can see where her daughter's got some of that fighting spirit from mm -hmm. her mom. Right. All right, make sure to watch tonight a special edition of 2020. It's investigating the rise of hate groups in America. That's at 10 p.m. Eastern right here on ABC.